All right, guys, how's it going? Awesome Soul here, and today we are back in Istralid. This time around, I will be doing a challenge mode game and showing off my fleet. A little work in progress fleet here. So, some of these are finished, others are not quite finished, and the screen that you just saw, well, I'll get to that in a second. So, my scout ship, no weapons, only a battery. It's meant for capping points very quickly, because it's quite fast. Got a power supply ship, a light bomber, a long-range lock-on missile bot, a close-range assassin. This is sort of a work in progress. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. This too is kind of a work in progress. And so is this one. So basically those three are kind of meh need redesigns or, well, a good scrapping. Never hurt anyone. This one, my uh, crown jewel of the fleet. The maximum capacity for cost, if you didn't know, is 1,000. And uh, I'm at the cap. And for those of you wondering, oh, why can't you go over? Well, the devs have actually said that there's a few reasons for that. One, uh, I think they were talking about lag and it being overpowered was the main thing. So obviously, if you have a fleet of a $2,000 equivalent ships and then one giant $2,000 ship, obviously the $2,000 ship is going to pick off the smaller ones one by one and therefore decreasing their firepower. So the big ships would pretty much have the advantage and I'm fine with this little cap here. Anyways, getting back into the design of it, it's a rapid-fire artillery gun with some decent range to it and quite a lot of damage. Very high DPS. The only problem is it can be countered by these point defense weapons fairly easily. But I'll get to that in-game. So real quick, I just want to show off the fact that you can program AI this was pointed out to me by Brutalbeck because, well, I had no clue this was a thing until, obviously, he told me about it. And then when he did, I completely had to make a new fleet because the old one was uh, made with a different strategy in mind. So how does programming AI work exactly? It may seem daunting, but it's actually fairly simple. You have a bunch of fairly easy code lines, I guess you could call them. Right here, this is basically your spawning, I believe. This is your movement. Basically, it tells you where to move. This is telling you what to attack or what kind of, I guess, maneuvers you can pull off. Because this is the attack line here, but I've changed it to flee because it has no weapon, so it's got to run. And then this is sort of the specialty section. So when they're down to a certain energy, find a recharger or find an ally or what have you. Now, how it works is it goes down in a drop-down list. So the first row here is what it will attempt to do. And if it can't do this, then it will attempt to do the next thing. And then if it can't do that, it will do the thing below it. And if it can't do that, it will do the thing below it, and so on and so forth. So, the thing that you want the ship to do should, in most cases, be at the top. But, you know, play around with that, and there's a lot of things you can do. Anyways, if we go back here to challenge mode, Belfry has been giving me a bit of a problem last time I faced him. Hopefully... I'll have better luck this time. So what I'm going to start with is hold shift and queue up two batches of scout ships. So holding shift will spawn five apiece, which is quite nice. So I think what I'm going to do is because they're sending out some light drones, I will get the missile ships, which are really good at countering drones and fast bots in general. So I'll spawn two more and pop out two energy supply ships. Now this has a lot to do with fleet design. 
these two here. They basically need each other to survive, because this has no weapons. And this has a very long range. However, if we take a look at the power bar here, it is actually using more power than it's generating just to move. See, the green is the movement, the blue is how much you're generating, and red is how much your weapons um, cost to fire. This, of course, is a representation of 10 seconds. So, there we go. See, that was an example of the AI. See, now they're all returning to get recharged, and then they will go off on their own. Now, these things have been giving me a lot of trouble last time I faced them with these bots in particular. That was when they had some really basic programming to them. I think they're doing a bit of a better job here. Now, what I want to do is bring in my plasma ship. It's got very low power thrusters, as you can see there. It's almost non-existent. And it's actually quite fast. But when I was playing multiplayer earlier, I didn't really do too well. Mainly because people I was up against decided it would be a fantastic idea to build a wall of missiles and artillery and the occasional phase bomber. Yeah, nice try. So, if you remember, I've programmed these guys to keep their distance. Their weapon allows them to keep a range of 1,758. And I've programmed them to retreat if anything comes in range of 1,600 meters, I believe. So let's see who can win. Because they've got recharge on that plasma disc. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Anything close to that will get obliterated, because it's got uh, recharge and damage. So, I'm gonna guess that's dealing 200 plus damage a pop. So let's see, are these, what are these doing? Attack enemy, and now they're running. Okay, cool. Flee within that. Nice. Is that almost dead? Yeah, it is. Very nice. Okay. So I think what it is time for is queuing up a bunch of scouts, because why the hell not? What I'm also going to do is queue up some light bombers just to show these guys off. Now the phase bomb is a fairly strong weapon. Uh, the only thing is you need to program your AI to use the bombing function. So. It's a it's in the drop-down list of the attack menu. So again, just play around with the AI and you will see exactly what to do. So how it works is it drops a bomb and then after a few seconds it activates. Unfortunately, they seem to be flying fairly quickly and not really staying in one spot. So it's more effective against I guess slow moving targets, but I figured that these would be kind of slow moving. Where are you going, good sir? I don't really know. That's odd. Hmm. There we go. Run by bomb enemy that is slower than... Ah, uh, okay, yeah. And hey, there we go. Looks like my scouts captured everything. I was kind of not expecting that, to be honest. And there they go. Just... Boom. Good. Cool. So... I guess that kind of covers everything I wanted to show off today. I, I would have gone into the campaign mode, but the whole revelation of programmable AI was pretty huge. And I don't know if you guys would have figured it out on your own. I probably wouldn't have. I was very confused by the AI disabled thing. I was like, why would I click that? I don't want to disable AI, that sounds really bad. So, AI disabled, 
is what you're gonna see when you actually spawn in. And if you go back to AI, good, it did not delete my AI, my AI if I could speak. It, it deleted my ability to talk, though. Anyways, I will go ahead and end the video here. A triumphant victory for the soul fleet? I don't know what to call it. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of the game if you have picked it up. Again, it's free on Steam. Let me know how you are enjoying it and what kind of ships are you building in your fantastical fleet. Anyways, I will end the video right about here. I've been the Awesome Soul, I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.